So yeah, why don't we uh, we'll jump into the next segment here. And this is something I'm really excited about. Now, this is something I've wanted to start for maybe a year. I've had this idea. Um, but it's a brand new kind of segment. So we're going to cut this, um, actually these segments out and post them um, onto the channel as well as their own separate videos. But um, this segment, I want to call What If. Now this is going to be a uh, hopefully reoccurring segment on the channel here. Well, uh, Raul and myself, we're going to pitch and, and give you our ideas on how we can reboot or remake um, a, a movie. It could be really anything. Um, you know, we'll remake it, we'll pitch you, kind of tell you who we want to cast, and um, you guys can kind of tell you if you would see it. I think this will be kind of like a fun little uh, game we could play. <clears throat> but uh, mm -hmm. why don't why don't we jump in? So the two movies that we're going to talk about and we're going to we're going to reboot for you today, um, tying in with Halloween for the Halloween extravaganza, um, is Monster Squad. So I'm going to pitch you guys my Monster Squad reboot, and then Raul, we're going to talk about In the Mouth of Madness. Oh. So, without further ado, let me grab my phone because I wrote out my pitch because I didn't want to mess it up. So, um, have you seen Monster Squad, like the original Monster Squad? I have only seen the Nostalgia Critic of okay. the Monster Squad. But, I know the premise and everything. Okay, cool. But I still haven't seen the movie. Okay, cool. So, forget, I mean, for kind of forget about the original movie, okay? Okay. I wanted to, I mean, if you're going to reboot Monster Squad today, A, you have to make it relatable for people, like, you have to set it in, like, 2017, mm -hmm. and you have to, and I don't want to use the original monsters, okay? So let me pitch yeah. this for you. Um, I'm just calling this Monster Squad, uh, that's just the title for it, and uh, I'll just kind of read you the pitch. Okay. So the main four characters are Steven, Josh, Devin and Harold. Okay. Steven is like 17. They're all in high school. So Steven 17. Okay. Josh is 18. He's one of the older guys in the group. Uh, Devin is 17. And Harold is the younger one in the group. And he's 16. Now, mm -hmm. um, if you're not familiar with the original Monster Squad, it's basically a bunch of nerds get together and they, you know, they have their own Monster Squad and they study monster movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. So my pitch starts and we're introduced to the Monster Squad. It's a group of four high school students whom love horror films and monster movies. One day after school, they decide to walk through the local cemetery. Harold, the youngest, is scared and warns them. You know, he's like, you know, guys, why are we going through a cemetery? We've seen so many horror films. You know, like, this is probably a bad idea. They all joke around, and eventually they convince him to, you know, enter. And as they're walking through, uh, the oldest, so Josh he notices mm -hmm. that there's an, this area of the cemetery that's blocked off. Mm -hmm. So he's like, hey, Devin, or whoever, you know, hey, Devin or Josh or, or Steven, you know, jump over the fence and see what's behind the, you know, what's closed off. So Devin yeah. jumps over and he walks in. A few minutes pass and suddenly a garbage bag is thrown across the fence. Devin returns mm -hmm. and he shows them. He says, look, you know, there was nothing really in this section, but I found this garbage bag. So they open it up and inside this garbage bag are a whole bunch of VHS tapes, a journal written in some kind of German, an emulet and five blank Polaroid pictures. Okay. So Josh grabs the journal. So the older guy grabs the journal and he, he, he scans through it. He's looking through it. Steven, you know, he suggests they should find someone to translate it. Because obviously it's not in English and they, they don't know what's on the, the on the thing. And, you know, obviously one of the other group members makes the, do the joke saying like, dumbass, it's 2017, let's just use Google. <laughs> you know, let's just look up and translate it ourselves. Yeah. Um, he grabs the emulet and suddenly his hand starts burning like when he grabs it. So he drops it and they all decide that they should leave and head out before it gets dark out. So they leave and they take everything in the garbage bag and they, they bring it with them. Okay. Okay, so we, we fast forward a few days later and we see them all in film studies class. And they're looking through the, the garbage bags. Also, this isn't 100% planned out scene by scene, so this is kind of just like my main pitch. But a few days later, um, they're in their film class and they're looking through their VHSs. And um, inside the bag, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Halloween, 
Hellraiser, Scream, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre are the VHSs that are in the bag. Mm-hmm. And 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 Cla- Josh is like, oh, these are like all classic horror movies. This is great, but they're, they're all confused, right? The, nothing really makes sense. They don't understand what all these things kind of have in connection with each other. Mm-hmm. So, um, Harold grabs the Halloween. You know, he grabs Halloween and takes the cover off. He starts looking around the corners of the VHS, looking for any symbol or passage that maybe will connect them all together. But there's nothing. So they're they're just like this is weird, you know. Maybe we can go and 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 see what what these well, you know we'll play these movies, see if there's anything on them. But all of a sudden, right, the the bell rings and they pack up, leave class. Um, anyway, then they end up going to uh, hanging out after school. But we'll, we'll cut to the the middle of the movie, right? So they're all sitting in uh, Harold's basement, and they you know they're using the Google Translate. They're looking up things from the book. And Josh realizes that there's a bunch of pages missing from the journal. So at the same time, Devin, he goes and enters Nightmare on Elm Street on the the vintage television in his basement. And all of a sudden, the television starts shaking and a spark charges out of the television and hits the bag of VHSs and a bright white light enters the room. You know, the TV explodes. Devin is flung back and hits the couch. Then everything just stops. And we cut to see them all standing against the back wall in shock. Harold says, shit, that was my grandma's TV. She's going to kill me. You know, as like a little joke. And Mm -hmm. and Josh, without hesitation, walks over and grabs the bag of VHSs. um, But they're all gone. The bag is empty and nothing. And and the only thing left behind is the amulet, the journal and the the photos. And they all just disappeared. Mm -hmm. So, Stephen suggests that they all should just, you know, let's take the night off. Let's get back at it tomorrow. You know, none of this makes sense. So, they all agree in confusion. So, they leave. Um, and they leave Harold to clean up the mess, pretty much. Causing, or that was caused by the explosion. <coughs> so, the older dude, Josh, he grabs the amulet. Stephen grabs the journal. And Devin takes the photos. And they all decide to meet up. Um, near the entrance of the cemetery in the morning before school the next day. So later that night, yeah. Stephen is eating uh, like takeout in his room. And he's mm-hmm. looking through this journal. A small breeze enters his room through the window, blowing the journal to a random page. He gets up and closes the window, but suddenly, standing beh- behind, like, like he's looking outside the window at this point, and he's going to close it. Mm-hmm. But, but all of a sudden, he sees... Michael Myers standing behind this bush looking towards his house. Oh, wow. And he wipes his eyes and he's he's still there. And Steven sarcastically like says to himself, yeah, no, not tonight. So he closes the journal, throws it in his bag and, you know, goes to bed. Mm-hmm. We then cut to see uh, the older guy, Josh, walking to the convenience store. He has the amulet in his pocket. And suddenly he reaches, he like reaches an alleyway when all, you know, when all of a sudden you hear laughs and you hear like the sound of metal scraping on metal and he Ooh. looks down the alleyway and Freddy Krueger is on the, at the end of the alleyway, alleyway, right? And he says uh-huh. to Josh, he says, come on, boy, let me see that amulet. I know you have it. So Josh slowly starts backing away and he makes like another joke saying like, sorry, no speak English. You know, he's trying to get out of it. <laughs> He suddenly trips and falls on his back. He looks up and he fucking hears a chainsaw like and Freddy Jason are standing above him while leather at Leatherface slowly walks closer to them and he's like, "What the fuck is going on?" All of a sudden, um he they're saying like, "Give us the damn amulet." And Josh scrambles through his pocket but doesn't get the chance before Leatherface swings this chainsaw and slaughters him. Freddy grabs the amulet and they leave. So then we cut to see a television and it's playing The Price is Right. An older father is watching it and smoking. He yells for Devin to come downstairs, but, you know, he doesn't answer. We creep Mm -hmm. up the stairs to see his room and it's empty. Um, The camera cuts and we see him sitting on the roof looking at the blank photos from the the garbage bag. He realizes Mm -hmm. all of a sudden that Josh started appearing, like, you know, he starts fading in. And now Josh is on one of these photos. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. He tries wiping it, and, you know, it's permanent. Like, Josh is now on one of these blank photos, and it makes no sense. The guy that just got killed. So he grabs uh-huh. his cell, and he texts Josh, but there's no service. So he jumps mm-hmm. down from the roof into his backyard where he notices the shed is wide open. So he walks over, and, you know, he's, he's confused. He, he, he walks over, uh, and he sees sitting in the middle of the area is the, uh, the Cenobite cube from Hellraiser. Mm-hmm. So he walks over, he grabs it, and he's like, you know, this is weird. I wonder if this is valuable, right? He's never seen Hellraiser, so he doesn't understand. He, he doesn't know that it's from anything. He just is like, this is weird. Let me check it out. So he tosses it up in the air, and he walks inside his house. So then, mm-hmm. we, so then we're, we're brought back to seeing Harold, and he's cleaning up the basement where the TV exploded, right? Earlier that evening. And, you mm-hmm. know, the phone rings. He answers it, and all he hears is... What's your favorite scary movie? And that the voice says. And, he, you know, he, he jokingly was like, you know, the Ghostbusters reboot. And he winks <laughs> to the camera. Or, so, you know, some, some funny, like, dialogue thing. And that's the thing. All these kids are supposed to be, like, kind of witty and, and teen, like, wisecrack kind of, kind of guys. Mm-hmm. So the voice becomes aggravated and the line hangs up. Harold puts the phone down and continues cleaning. Anyway, so we cut. The next day, Harold and Stephen are sitting by the entrance of the cemetery waiting. Right? Like they, they all mm-hmm. said the next morning. Um, Devin arrives riding his bike and skids and slides over to them. He shows them the cube he found the night before. And they all go through their weird stories saying like, Yeah, you know, d- did anything weird happen to you guys last night? And they're like, well, yeah, like you know, all this stuff started happening. I got a phone call. You know, I, I saw Michael Myers kind of thing. So he shows them the cube and... Um, he then shows them Josh's photo and he says, look, Josh appeared on this photo and they're like, that's so weird. So they all sit around and they're waiting for him. You know, after some time pass, Harold suggests that they just go to school and that Josh must just be sick. You know, he stayed home for the day. Anyway, so this all leads into the final act and throughout the day, you know, Josh never shows. They all get worried. They sit outside the school and wait after... Um, hours pass as teachers exit the building the janitor locks up for the night and after they're left the school is empty steven mm-hmm. starts ye- uh, well steven starts hearing yelling coming from inside the school and they hear mm-hmm. josh yelling for help so devin is like what the like they're all the whole time they're like what the fuck like they they're all it's kind of like um green room you know you saw green room right you know how yeah. all of those characters are kind of stupid and they don't know what's going on the whole movie yeah. It's very similar for kind of like the, the teens in this. Like they're all, they just don't, like they're, they're huge film fans, but they're like the film fans that just don't know shit. And they're just dumb, you know? Mm-hmm. So they're like, what the hell? So um, he walks around the school and he notices a window open, so he enters. Um, anyway, long story short, they get taunted and led into the gymnasium where the final battle is happening. Where it's revealed that in the 80s, a mad scientist found an ancient amulet that brought life to any object and cursed the VHS with it. So there's a huge battle. You know, you have all the horror guys stalking through the school. Freddy, Ghostface, Leatherface, all of you know, they're all there. They're all fighting the kids, right? Harold gets ripped apart by Jason. Steven gets stabbed by Ghostface, leaving Devin the last one. The movie ends with the same portal opening up from the original movies and all of a sudden all of the classic monsters step out so it's like they enter the portal from the first movie all of a sudden they're in the same you know we'll have to probably cgi the original actors to play their same Uh characters but all of the original dracula and them all all of a sudden appear and that's when the movie cuts and that opens up a new that's how they should reboot the monster universe so you have all of the fucking slasher guys all of the Hollywood classic monsters in one universe together. So that's my pitch for Monster Squad. <laughs> wow. I like everything of it, but I didn't like the cliffhanger. I wanted to see them fight. Well, that's what I mean. Like, there's a huge battle at the end. Like, they all fight. Like, it's a big sequence. But the, the very oh. end of the movie is, um, you know, is, is the portal opening up, and that's right before credits. Yeah, I, 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 I think that would be cool. It. And I just want to see all of those guys in a movie together. Uh, the thing that I like the most, like <laughs> killing the kids also. Yeah, fuck them. Let's slaughter them. 
Let's, right? You're not watching the movie for the kids anyway. Like, the Monster Squad's are irrelevant. The real Monster Squad are all the bad guys working together. Yeah, that's the thing that I really like because I was like, you didn't went like a regular studio that you make all of the kids survive <laughs> at the end. No, you did the thing that I like. No, you also killing the children. Mm-hmm. That, that's so positive for me. <laughs> <laughs> wow um no so that's that's kind of like i was just thinking about that the other day i wrote it out um let me know if you guys want to see that i think that would be cool or let me know if there's anything you would do differently um because like i said i i picked i picked like freddy and jay i just picked like the classic guys i threw you know Ghostface in there too pinhead um because uh-huh. i just it would be so cool to see them all kind of work together and especially if you bring in dracula and stuff the dynamic would be awesome it could be like the Avengers. It, it'll be, it's like what they sh- what Universal should have done with Tom Cruise. Well, in, instead of Tom Cruise. Wow. But yeah, no, that, I, that's I my really pitch like of Monster it. Squad. Um, why don't uh, we jump into uh, your pitch for In the Mouth of Madness? Okay. I didn't have the, write, the time to write it. That's cool. But and also I'm improvising a part that I have been thinking since two years ago. And I just improvise a lot right now. Like, Sweet. This not I'm not telling you like the whole act, but I'm gonna make, make like give you like the elevator pitch for yeah. like two minutes. Okay, this is my my imagining of how I retell in the matter of madness. Instead of books, it's a cinematic universe. This idea I had it since like two years ago. You see that sorry crane. It's like a producer and writer, <coughs> and I just think of this. He could be portrayed by Benedict Cumberbatch. But you can see Benedict Cumberbatch. He could be also like Sorry Crane, that he's very like hidden. He's a person that he doesn't got got out a lot, but you can see the craziness in his eyes. You can see that he's broken, and so Sorry Crane, he make all of this cinematic cinematic universe of different horror movies that they're all connected. And they're like different spin-off movies. And so you see that he's making the like, the finale that is gonna co- be called In the Matter of Madness. And so the producers of the movie, the studio already has everything developed. They, they have their actors prepared, they have the studio, everything prepared, but they don't have the final draft of the script. And so they hire, uh, you could call him also like the same guy, Trent, like in the original movie, you will, or we can change the name. This guy is gonna, I just think of this, it could be portrayed by Jake Gyllenhaal. Because you just remember me how awesome. Jake Gyllenhaal, he's, the way that he became so crazy at the end in Nightcrawler. Yeah. And I was like, I would really like to see Jake Gyllenhaal in that kind of in that kind of story, like in the matter of madness, and so he gets hired by Sam Neil. Sam Neil is gonna be Charlton Heston, like in the original movie. He's gonna awesome. be the guy that hires Trent mm-hmm. to find to find Sarah Crane, and so that's who that will be his like his cameo and also like fan service because of the original. That'd be cool. And so he's gonna have his assistant. It could be anyone. I still haven't think like who can portray her, but this assistant is like a hipster, uh, modern girl that she wants to record everything that she's doing. So she has like a GoPro in her head. So she recorded Jake Gyllenhaal investigating where his solid crane is. And so we see her and him in a diner and they're hearing the news of how the Sorry Crane fans they started to go crazy because they want to know what is the end, what is going to be the end of his cinematic universe. And also, you also make a comment of how a fan base goes crazy. That's cool. I love that a lot. How it goes crazy, like trying to find out everything. Like we're going, we're talking about this right now. We we're talking about behind the scenes, tweets of other, of tweets of a director, interviews, controversies. And so we see those fans want to know every single detail of Sorry Crane. But Sorry Crane is not on social media. The only thing that you know about Sorry Crane is a photo of him when he started to develop these movies. Because he's only the writer 
of the movies. And so then you see a fan stumble into the cafeteria, like in the original movie, but he kills a waiter in front of Jake Gyllenhaal and says, are you a fan of Sutter Crane? And he says, no, I am not. And then you see a cop killing this fan. And then you see Trent renting all of the movies. He bought all of the movies. And then he's watching all of them. And he's trying to decipher what is the different things in these movies. Why is the, all of the people all obsessed with them? And also it makes a comment of now, now many people also read this is a different parallel of the original movie that everybody read all of the Southern Crane books, but no, this is a different, this is more actual right now. No one reads anymore. Everybody is watching movies or watching TV shows. And so then he stumbles into the different DVD covers and he makes the puzzle like in the original one to find out where the Southern Crane is. And so he stumbles, instead of going to a town, he goes to an old studio in Hollywood that has been forgotten. And so he opens that studio and he thinks that he's in a regular studio, but he's not. Also, that's a twist that I put out. The thing that he's stumbling into the studio, he goes to like different sets of towns and cafeterias that he stumbles the different uh, movies that Sarah Green that has developed because we also I put up put out here that you also seen different scenes of his different movies and we can put out the very different cameos of the great actors mm -hmm. and we can see the different story that Sarah Green that has created because that's the other thing that I really like from In the Modern Madness they set up a lot of the different books that he wrote but we never saw that much and so we can put out here the different scenes of different movies that Sarkin already has created before in the Mad of Madness. We can put out like Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling in like a traveling like hotel and like with different creatures. And then we can put out another scene with like with Nick Campbell and also like uh, Carney Cox traveling like another different setting, but they're all, they're all related because it's sort of crazy work. Yeah. And so we see Jake Gyllenhaal in this set and then all of the sudden we see characters of all of the movies that he's he watch and then he's trying to go crazy like what is real and what is not he's saying hey hey emma stone you're not acting anymore and no she said no my name is x it could be the name of a character mm -hmm. and so he's Jekyll and all, you see Trent already start to go crazy. I was like, what is real and what is not? And then he stumbles to Benedict Cumberbatch and started crying. And then he says, no, you're not in a studio. You're in my mind. You're seeing what I'm seeing every day. And I said, no, you're crazy. No, you, I, need to, I need to get your final draft. I was like, no, you, you cannot get it. And then I was like, no. And then he stumbles and like tried to wake up. Even the assistant, I was like, we're we're not we're not in a we're not in a studio. We're not in a real setting. Like this is fake. This is not real. And so he tries to like to get out from the studio. And then he opens the door. And he's in a different movie. I saw the crane. And then he opens another door. And he's in a different world. And he cannot get out. It's like a maze. Wow. And so. At the end, Sonic Crane reveals, reveals like, no, you are living in the Mad of Madness. And then we, we reveal that the assistant, that he's recording everything of, of the reactions of Jake Gyllenhaal, our trend, that GoPro is the filming of In the Mad of Madness. Oh. Wow. So it's also it's a comment of uh, like uh, also like handheld movies, yeah. like uh, make, making also like those kind of movies. It's a comment of fanatism, and also it's a comment of what is real and what is not, like in the original. And then wow. Sarah Crane reveals his final form. It's gonna be like a crazy Cthulhu, like monster, but we're gonna see it like a really horrible monster, like a really 
cool, like practical effects, CGI monster. And Jake and I was like, no, this is fake. And then he's gonna, you're gonna hear his voice throughout, like mental. It says, no, you're also a character in my movie. And the final twist will be that the whole thing, it was so the script. And you see the final scene will be Sam Neill reading the whole script. And then you see a, you see a cameo of me, <laughs> Raul Rodriguez, as Raul Rodriguez pitching the In the Matter of Man is reboot. And that, that will be the ending. Dude, that's awesome. That is so awesome. Like, uh, the thing that I really like the most, like, when I always pitch, like, you have seen this, like, if, when I pitch something, I want, like, I want to have crazy twists, I want it to also go meta, mm-hmm. but also to have horror on it. I love it. I, I especially love the cast. Mm-hmm. But, oh, God. What's What studio made the original? We need to get them on this now. I think it was New Line. <clears throat> New Line, please. <laughs> Make this movie. And also, like, I'm not pitching, like, a $50 million yeah. horror movie. It could be, like, a $20 million. Uh, we only need, like, the special effect for the, the, for the final reveal of the monster. The monster, yeah. Because I pitch a psychological horror movie, like, in the original, because you don't know what is real and what is not. I only want, like, a really hard-on special effects, like, five-minute scene of, of the monsters, and that will be it. Wow. Yeah. Dude. And also because at the end, because we're talking about my cameo, you don't know what, what wasn't real and what is not. Yeah. Is the script is real? Or me, I'm sorry, Crane, dressed as Raul Rodriguez. Oh, it could be an analytical. It could be like twist yeah. upon a twist. Dude, that's awesome. I really do. I would make that. That'd be so awesome. I love that. And like I told you, I just think of this pitch <laughs> 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Dude, that's great. I'm a fan. I'd watch that right away. I have to. I want to rewatch the original again because it's been a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really want to watch that again, but... Yeah, I'm blown away. That's great. Because I just imagine when you when we were talking right now about Jay Killen, I was like, I mm-hmm. imagine Jay Killen going crazy, going <laughs> see his size. Yeah, exactly. He would be perfect. Into like blood and try to react what is really what is not. I was yeah. like, that that I that's a good. And also that's a whole twist. Like I told you, that's the other thing that I really like from in the matter of madness. Yeah. It sets up fanatism it says how people Which I think are obsessed that would be awesome with, to ex- with a book well especially so, because that's something you should explore with fans mm-hmm. and everything especially now that, oh. and right right now that's the thing that it, the change that i did i was like no now people are obsessed oh, and, with cinematic universes well, and that's the thing i loved that was one of my favorite parts of the whole the pitch was like it reminded like the whole like old hollywood type feel of it like, that mm-hmm. would be awesome to explore. And having Benedict Cumberbatch play, you know, the main exec. Like, that, awesome, like, so cool. Like, that, like, I like that a lot. I would, that would be a really cool um, visual, uh, too. Like, seeing, seeing all the Hollywood, like, especially seeing all the characters with Emma Stone and all that. That would be, that would be great. Yeah, because you can also be, like, a meta yeah. comment on it, like, when is the actor finishes? When is the character finishing? And I just think of this. I would really like to have Jared Leto as a cameo. Yeah. Uh, how he goes really super, like, super, how do you call it? <laughs> into the role or something? <clears throat> yeah. Well, he, he's, a char- well, he's a character actor. He, you know. Mm-hmm. But, wow. Well, anyway, that was What If. That was one of the new segments we wanted to do. Um, let us know what you thought if you th- or if you have suggest this would be fun actually if you guys have any suggestions of movies you think should be rebooted just message us them and we'll think of a, 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 a I'll think of a plot and a script and I'll pitch it on one of these episodes um, because that was fun I loved that that was that was good mm-hmm. oh that would be like a cool challenge like it would make us pitch a reboot or a sequel on the spot. 
Mm-hmm. That would be great. That, that's a cool game. 